Okay, so let's start work on the last part of MP2, which is dealing with the um, UI, right? So this is the part. So at this point, just to kind of summarize uh, where we are and what we've accomplished. So we have our, um, the server is able to accept new a post request that will create a new favorite place. The client is able to issue those requests. And we've also gotten to the point where we can launch this favorite place, uh, sorry, this add favorite place activity from the uh, main activity. And we're also passing it this information that it needs to know that the main activity knows when it's launched, which is specifically the position. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna fire up my emulator here. Oop, wrong thing. Um, so, so first of all, at this point before continuing, you should make sure that all of your other MP2 test cases are passing because we're gonna build on top of them. Um, so, you know, if you still have problems with some of those earlier test cases, work those out first before we get here. Um, so the only thing that's not working at this point is the add place activity. Let's go ahead and run the app and, and see what we can see um, this way. And so what I'm expecting to, to happen is I'm expecting that um, when I long press on, now I don't really have an, uh, the ability to activate this feature yet, uh, but when I long press on the map, it launches this uh, add place activity. And I, and I can go back to the previous activity, um, but currently the add place activity is blank. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, and, and, and really throughout uh, the MP, uh, throughout sort of you know, the diff different parts of it, we're really uh, asking you and expecting you to learn partly from these walkthroughs, but also partly from the code that we've already provided. And so this is gonna be a good time for you to review main activity and try to understand some of what's happening there. The add place activity is gonna be simpler, um, but it's gonna build on some of the same concepts. So one of the things I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about in, in this walkthrough is how do we load the layout? Now, we could have had you design the layout yourself, but I've actually provided a layout for you. Um, and so let's do that first. So uh, when we look through our main activity, we'll see that in onCreate, which is the first method that's called as part of the activity life cycle. So when the activity is starting up, this onCreate method is, is called. Uh, there's this call to set content view. And set content view is what tells Android which layout to use for this particular activity. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna cut and paste this. I'm gonna go over here to my add place activity, which is currently blank. And I'm gonna start typing on create. Uh, that'll give me the, um, I'm gonna put final in here, otherwise Jexcel is gonna be upset with me. Uh, I can leave this call to super with this uh, bundle, which is a way to save state for the activity that we're not worrying about for this particular uh, project. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, oops, I guess I'm gonna close the add place activity, it's not what I want. Okay, there we go. Um, now, here's the thing though. I don't wanna use the main activity layout. If I did this, what would happen is this would load up and you would see the search bar and then you would see an empty map uh, component. But this activity has a different layout. Um, and so if I do r.layout and I start, type, uh, start typing, you'll see that there's an add place layout that's part of the MP that we've already provided. This is the layout we want you to use and this has certain things defined in it that the test suites are gonna rely on. So, you know, uh, later on, you may have a chance to do some more freelancing, but for now, just please use this layout and, and we're gonna build on top of it. All right, so let me go ahead and, and restart the app. Um, and now, let's go ahead, wait for the map to load, we'll long press again. Cool, so now I've got my, um, my uh, uh, sort of thing ready to go. And you see that I've got some text here that I've stuck in uh, but this, this is editable. Um, and so the user can say, my favorite place is the park or whatever, right? Um, and so you'll see I've got a text box and below it, I've got two buttons, save and cancel. Now, all I'm doing right now is I'm loading this layout. So what we'll talk about next is how do we actually connect this layout to uh, functionality, right? So the layout defines how the this screen on the app looks, but what I'm gonna to have to do in my uh, add place activity code is bring the layout to life, essentially, add functionality to these buttons. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna do one other thing, which is that I'm gonna go over here to uh, the uh, application, my favorite place is application. 
And you'll see here that there's a string um, and you can use your string from id.text if you want to. You can also, but it actually doesn't really matter, right? I, I would encourage you to use your string from id.text. So what you want to do is you want to cut and paste that string here. Uh, but if you want to just use um, like a random, uh, what, what we're using here is what's called a unique identifier. So I'm just going to use this random unique identifier here for the video, partly because I don't want to tell you what my ID is because I don't want you submitting stuff on my behalf. Um, but, but take your ID from ID.txt or if you want to just generate a random one, either should work and cut and paste it into this file because the test suites are going to use this and we're also going to use this, you know, um, when we, so this is how, so what is this? I should have tried to explain this a bit better. My apologies. So this is the ID that identifies this app, this client. Um, now, normally, if you were doing this for real, you would have some type of authentication system. So you would provide a way for the user to log in, and then the server would have a way of taking information from the client and validating those credentials so that it could determine who was making the request. And frequently that validation process or that um, authentication process produces like an email address that you can then associate with the piece of information that was provided by the client. But you know, uh, getting into authentication is a little bit more than we want to cover for this project. So what we're going to do is a simpler approach where every, you can, and again, this isn't how this would work because every app would need its own different ID. And right now what I'm doing is I'm creating a situation where every app has the same ID, but for our purposes, this is going to work okay. So we're going to give the app a unique ID. And then when it communicates with the server, we're going to send along this ID in our request. That's how we're going to identify the client. Okay, so uh, what have I done? So essentially, I've, I'm loading uh, this um, this uh, this layout now as part of uh, the activity. Now these buttons, you'll see right now, these buttons don't do anything. Uh, you know, I can click on them and nothing happens. So we're going to work on that next. Um, but I'm loading the correct layout for my app place activity, and I've also added my ID to the favorite places application. So those are the two things we're going to do to get started. What we'll talk about next is how do we actually get these buttons to do useful things?